we're here again. We are back. Look, I, I feel a little underdressed this evening, Dave. Looking good. Got my good. coat on, and uh, just, just for our special guest tonight, today, we have my old buddy, animator Ben Lane. is going to be on the show tonight. Whether he likes it or not, waiting in the wings, just waiting for his chance. Very excited. This is his chance at a national audience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, working on The Simpsons and, and Disney stuff, and uh, yeah, that's nothing compared to uh, to Dave and Joe are bored. And we, and we finally had a uh, an open slot that he could get into after uh, all these weeks of pestering us. Yep, yep. You know, our list of people begging to be on the show is... Uh, eh. So how are you, Joe? I'm doing well, doing very well. Uh, had a long drive today, a little tired, but I'm ready to go. Well, there you go. Me, tired. I'm bored, but it's the end of July. We're going into August. This is our fifth show. We finished up a month of shows, and uh, I can tell you right now, that's eh, never going to happen again. <clears throat> <laughs> There's no way we're going to do another month of shows straight through, maybe a little here and there, but we'll see. We shall see. We'll see. But uh, I was told, you know, we're getting reviews for the shows. Uh, my favorite being uh, that this show is a, a bunch of malarkey. I thought that was the most uh, accurate review that I've heard so far. Yes. But uh, my, my other favorite was that right from the start, we need to just hook them in. We need to get people in and watching. And what better way to do that? than Adam's new food review. Let's bring him out. Let's cut to the chase. Hey, Adam, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Adam, we're told that uh, people like seeing you on the show. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, I think it I think it should be your show from now on, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> Adam's food review with Bored Dave and Joe. Yeah. So, Adam, what do you got for us today? Today, I have Snickers popcorn. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. That's about right. I'm not too surprised. I mean, I'm fascinated by the notion of uh, Snickers flavored popcorn. Uh, let's let's just run through real quick. Uh, all the foods have been eaten, right? Over the past, this is the fifth episode. There have been four other food products. All showed up in a bag form yep and they've all been eaten yep not necessarily by you yep okay <laughs> all right let's go let's go with snickers candy pop popcorn all right so like the, this popcorn it's actually it looks like there's nothing but this time, it's like inside. It hasn't fallen off like the M and M's. Um, this is thrilling. So, I. It just tastes like chocolate. <laughs> it doesn't taste like Snickers. It kind of does. It's like. It, it it has a slight taste of Snickers, but just it just tastes like chocolate. So not and not popcorn. a nougat. Mm, I don't know what that means. Yeah. I don't well, last week you had a M and M popcorn. Yeah. Which, is this any better or worse? It's better. Yeah. Oh oh well. There we go. The evolution of popcorn and candy. Once again, that was candy pop popcorn, Snickers flavor. Okay, Adam. Well, thanks. We'll see you later. Yep. Bye. Oh, my God. That kid's going to get diabetes. Then we'll need a whole different uh, type of sponsor. Oh, man. All righty. Well, let's, uh, you know, I, I'm itching for my buddy Ben to join the show. Not the first time I've been itching for my buddy Ben, but hey. Let's uh, let's let's get to our uh, pick of the week here. These are comics that uh, Joe and I uh, recommend. Comics that we like. Comics that uh, we find, you know, 
worth owning. So Joe, you started off because I need to know what the heck you're talking about here. Okay, awesome. Yeah, this is a little uh, off the beaten path here. So uh, anybody who knows me as a uh, comic collector and reader and art collector knows my affinity for swamp monsters. Muckmen. Muckmen of all sorts. So this comic is Supernatural Thrillers number one from 1972, I believe. And uh, it has the story of It. So It is a Theodore Sturgeon short story, which is considered, which is from uh, like 1930-something, I believe. And it's kind of considered to be like the original muck monster science fiction story. So I, the original short story I have in this collection called Swamp Men. And it's only a few pages long. And it's, you know... Kind of, kind of what you would expect, sort of like universal horror type monster story thing, I guess. So this is the comic book adaptation of that story from 1972. First thing of interest, Dave, do you know who the artist is that did that cover? Do you recognize that? It's kind of interesting who it is. is that I don't a, know. Is that a pluk? I don't know. It is not. That is Jim Steranko. Oh, it's a Steranko. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Just the cover. Uh, the interior art is by Marie Severin, and the story is adapted by Roy Thomas. So we look inside. You can see the monster on the inside does not quite look like the Steranko monster on the cover. But that kind of gives you an idea of the, uh, the type of story that we're talking about there, this muck monster thing that's kind of terrorizing uh, this little countryside and then i won't spoil the ending for you but fun little story if you want to track down the original short story by theodore sturgeon or the comic book adaptation which as i recall I, i've only had this comic for a few years and i don't think i spent very much on it i don't think it's necessarily very collectible you know maybe four or five bucks or something like that i like it you do like your muck men yes i do all right well uh in that vein uh, I also chose something very similar. I chose uh, Super Junior's Holiday Special. <laughs> That's right. Because when you think of Muckman, you think Super Junior's Holiday Special. Uh, Best of DC, Blue Ribbon Digest, number 56. Uh, boy, oh boy, if anybody doesn't know what a DC Digest was, uh, they were these little, oh, little digest size comics. And nice square bind. Oh, and I tell you, uh, now that I'm old, I can't read these. So <laughs> the print is so bad. <laughs> I, can't, I open them up and I'm like, I, I can't read this. But uh, Super Juniors, okay, so the comic itself, uh, this is the only U.S. Ap appearance of the Super Juniors ever. And if anybody wants to know what the Super Juniors were, uh it was DC's attempt at creating a line of products uh, where all their main characters were little little toddlers. And uh, it started in the late 70s. <clears throat> By this point, this is 1985. And uh, this was the only real comic book that they had done. Started out first in Mexico because the Super Juniors were big in the 70s in Mexico and like, I think, Portugal. Um, so they did a comic and then it showed up in the digest. Basically the story of it is that these orphans get transformed by the spirit of Christmas into uh, Bat Guy, Flash Kid, Kid Robin, Super Kid and Wonder Tot. And uh, the bad guy was Wally the Weather, Weather Wizard. So there you go. I think the story is all in kind of rhyme. Again, really hard to read, but uh, DC just did a hardcover uh, collection of through the 80s experiments, and this is reprinted in it, which now I think I might have to check out just so I can see it uh, in a decent size and uh, printed printed a little bit better. Um, written by our buddy Tom DeFalco, who uh, did Spider-Girl, lots of stuff with our spirit animal Ron friends. Uh Layouts by Jerry Grandinetti, and then a cover and finishes by Vince Guiglia, 
who uh, I don't think ever did anything else for DC. Um, but yeah, it's it's a fascinating piece. And okay, so the reason why this thing is fascinating is that it doesn't really exist by itself, but it has a bizarre history to it. Uh, because to begin with, people think it's it's from the super baby toys that were always advertised in the uh, the Heroes World comics that the Joe Kubert School illustrated, where there were all these baby dolls for superheroes. Super Juniors is not Super Baby, okay? Let's just let's just get that off the board here. And obviously there was Marvel with DC and the Super Babies, so just just stop messing with me. It's not Super Babies, it's Super Juniors. Super Juniors started in around 77. Again, products that kind of made it to America, but really sold more in Mexico and uh, I guess maybe Portugal. Wallpaper, weird ass toys. Uh, cups, placemats, yeah, oh, the, the, the paper cutouts are great because they're painted and then they have like Green Arrow and Hawkman with these things. Uh, come on, that pillow, what more could you ask for there? That's just creepy. Uh, who wouldn't want Batman as a toddler on their sleeping bag? And the one thing that we did get, and uh, this is a fantastic photo by Cool and Collected website. I have these as well. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, super. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, Superman? There's a fire in the barn. So yeah, those I think made it uh, made it in the states. Those are are not super hard to get. This is an example of, uh, I guess, some of the 70s style guide art that platstallions.com had uh, dug up. Um, but for most of us, in the that was a lot of the 70s product. In 82, the Super Junior showed up in the lovely 1982 DC style guide. Oh, DC style guide. Mm. And uh, this was a, a collection of art mostly done by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, our buddy and, uh, and artistic hero. Um, there are sections of the style guide. There's a Teen Titans section that George Perez did. There's a Super Friends section that Kurt Schaffenberger drew. I thought maybe, just maybe, somebody else drew these, but I reached out to Jose and said, ah, did you? And he said, oh, I did. So this is this has been verified by uh, Jose as being his art, great uh, based off of based off of the '70s, you know, designs. And this is what was in that '82 style guide. Uh, you had one color piece, and then you had uh, black and white line art for Super Baby Superman Junior, Batman Robin Junior, <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman Junior. <laughs> Hawkman, Green Arrow, Flash, Green Lantern, and uh, unlike the uh, the the book, unlike the story, they they kept them. These are not the names they give the orphans. <laughs> now, my style guide has kind of an intriguing little note penciled in. There are some pages that have uh, size comparisons for the characters. Talks about the different lines. Uh, I think my style guide came from Kenner. And somebody had actually penciled in ideas for a six-inch line, as you can see, of stuffed characters. Um, never, never was made uh, because in America, this really never went anywhere. And in fact, I love that there's a Supergirl there and uh, and the Green Arrow. Oof! Uh, really, all that was made in the '80s, I think, in America, were some puzzles, some jigsaw puzzles with the superpowers line which is hysterical that it got slapped into our favorite superpowers line. And uh, I, shoot, I, I, I don't know if I still have this puzzle, but I swooped it up on eBay years ago. Uh, it, 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 it's terrifying. And uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> staring, staring into my soul. That'd keep you busy on a, uh, you know, snowy winter day, putting that one together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's time consuming. That is time consuming. So that is, uh, I love the Super Juniors. 
I love stuff that never really got to an American audience. There's a lot of stuff online that people like to claim, I think even on Wikipedia, that it started in 1982 with the Jose Style Guide, and it did not. It started in, uh, I think, at least 77. And uh, 82 through 85 was its kind of final, final breath. <laughs> but I mean, that's... That's eight years of Super Juniors, uh, which is more than you'd ever, ever really think it would last. Wow, that's very educational. There you go. I like those Super Juniors. All right. Well, hey, before we bring up Ben, let's just get to it. Let's let's do the Bob Dylan Minute. And uh, as we do every time, we give Joe 60 whole seconds to talk about Bob Dylan. So are you ready, Joe? I think I'm ready. And go. Okay, so last week in the Bob Dylan Minute, I talked about the Traveling Wilburys and how that was actually my introduction to Bob Dylan fandom. And I thought, you know, one minute really isn't enough to talk about the Traveling Wilburys. So tonight is Traveling Wilbury Minute Part 3. Yes, that's right, Part 3. And don't worry, folks, you did not miss an episode because just like with the Traveling Wilburys, Traveling Wilburys released two albums. The first one was titled Volume 1. The second one you see here is titled Volume 3. So this is uh, Volume 3 of our Traveling Wilbury discussion. The only other thing they they released was this uh, like box set collection in 2007, which has all the music from both of the CDs, plus a couple of uh, bonus outtake tracks and a DVD with some of the videos and that sort of thing on them. And uh, so... Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, that's there we me. go. Uh, you got any more? You got any more before we bring out uh, our, our, our guest for tonight? Got to leave them wanting more, Dave. I do want to say, our, our next guest uh, always felt was a split image of Mr. Tom Petty. So so let's bring out... Let's, let's close out of this whatever malarkey malarkey and let's let's bring out our good buddy ben Lund. oh yeah that whole section's gonna oh, get me youtube <laughs> <sighs> oh i was doing i was doing bob dylan for you earlier mm -hmm. there you go I'm not paying royalties for that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I guess I should have thought of that. Oh, Can you hear me okay? Ladies and gentlemen, anima animation legend Ben Lane. Hi, Ben. Testing. We good? Sound? Sounds good. We got sound? No crackle? Uh, no crackle. I like Sounds it. Good. I like it. I like it. Oh, so we got ben, we, uh, we've known each other for uh, way too long. Way wow. too long. Yeah. 30? Has it been 30, almost 30 years? Can't be 30 because I've just had my 30th high school. So it had to been probably like 25. We'll say 25. 25 would be 1997. All right. So we'll say 27. 27 and a half. <laughs> oh, baby. Okay. So uh, Ben and I went to Columbus College of Art and Design. And uh, afterwards, uh, you went into the lovely world of animation. Magical. Magical. And the first big time gig uh, was, uh, what, 1998 with Film Roman? At the, 90, it was late 97. Yeah. Late 97. Yeah. And that was, do they still do it where you do test submissions? Uh, it's I mean, like literally the same building. I mean, it's moved around three or four times since those days. But I mean, I getting into film Roman, is it still the same process that you went through back in 90 and 25 years ago? I think so. I'm sure the test has been updated, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's still the same process. Drawing on paper, faxing it out. Well, we've moved up a little. I still yeah. have. Yeah. 
early on really you sent me a stack of drawings ptsd and, and and i still have them wow yeah they're going up on that, ebay tomorrow that's a character layout stuff that i don't i haven't done that in a while i do storyboards now well let's run through uh, let's run through let's let's go here and let's run through a little bit of the uh, the history of the Ben Lane. You've got uh, obviously the Simpsons and uh, Family Guy was something you would do in between the Simpsons. I I jumped over there for a season and uh, it was a season too long. <laughs> it was, uh, not as much fun as I thought it would be. I tried much it. Like, much like this show. Yeah. And then uh, I plop these in because these are some of the newer things that you've done uh, that people might know about that you did storyboards on. Yeah, I've worked on a couple of the Maggie shorts. There's a There was a Star Wars one. Yeah, that one. Um, I feel like there's another one. Yeah, that one too. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's, hey. there's one of my homework drawings you did for me. Oh wow! Yep. Ouch. Yep. yep. That's All that's right. going back in time. All right. Before and before we keep uh, before we talk more about uh, the Simpsons, I like this one because that's the one time that you said, "Well, I tried to draw you uh, as a Simpsons character." I mean, the Streamyard logo was covering up my uh, my face, but uh, but there we are. There's Cher. There's uh, oh the sea. The important elements are there. The brow and whatnot. All right, so let's go back to uh, let's go back to talking about the uh, the Simpsons here, and let's just leave it on that for now. Um, nowadays, you're doing storyboards. I do, yes. And uh, we do have a is the clip that we have kind of a normal style or normal look of of what your storyboards look like. This is the golfing one. Yeah. Is that what you're playing? Yeah, that's it's done uh using Storyboard Pro, drawn on Cintiqs and and uh, yeah, delivered digitally and it has audio, right? Yeah, it has audio. Yeah, let's take it. Let's 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 roll the clip. Ooh. Well, there's supposed to be audio. There we go. There we go. Everything's not to like. That's not to like. Those aren't to like. He's not to like. And I get a bad feeling about her. And also. We make our own sound effects. Yeah, they only provide you a little bit of audio for that kind of stuff. So You made one mistake, Bill Dorf. You forgot about the wad. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to all our ATVs? That kid with the wad, instead of buying one, he rented them all with this. Kid power. I like this particular I'm playing golf. this particular bit because I actually got to, to throw in to gags, golf. which you don't normally get to do on this show. Uh, that bit with him peeling out in the in the sand pit was not in the script, but they liked it. Oh. Who's a suck up now, Bildorf? For the first time in a hundred years, the bingo bango bongo is cancelled. <laughs> awesome the, the uh that's actually a that i realized that's actually an early stage that I, there was a cleanup process uh phase after that so those drawings were a little rougher than what i would finally turn in which okay so that's my next question which it's digital obviously these days uh on storyboard pro you said is the is the program what's the yeah. program and then the storyboard pro. so for an entire episode is that your is that your how much of the show 
is your responsibility to to storyboard out? Typically, three artists split the show, so it almost works out to be from one commercial break to the next. That's usually about or an act, which doesn't always fall in the commercial break, but um, so about six minutes, five, seven minutes, six minutes. How much you think? Twenty-two minute show plus you get credits and and uh, the opening. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably about six. I mean, because it, it, it really does vary from show to show because they'll run over a lot, a lot and they'll have to edit out a few minutes. Um, it doesn't sound like much, but it 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 uh, it's a lot. <laughs> well, and that's the next question. So you've seen that would be, is that round one or is that, what? where is that in the process that we just watched? Yeah. What you just watched there would be uh, after the first two weeks, you know, I roughed it out, you know, fleshed it out as, you know, so it's clear what my idea is for each scene. The writers then look at that, the directors and everybody, we have a meeting and make some changes because there's always changes, uh, stuff to be addressed and then clean up. So we get another two weeks for that. And it's so basically two, two stages for you. Yeah, if, it goes, if all goes well, two stages. Yeah, but yeah, so about a month on each each show. So I'll jump start on like episode one, and then by the time that wraps up, I'll start on episode three, and so forth. That's awesome. I I get a lot of uh, a lot of those for books when I'm doing books based on episodes, and the uh, usually when we're doing movie books, those those the movies aren't anywhere near done. And so I, I I get sent the storyboards like that. And uh, nice. Oh yeah, yeah. When you're trying are, to, when are they well done? Do they look nice? Um, it it varies. Uh, the okay. the storyboard artist ability to be on model in in rough form varies from artist to artist, and some of them do it better than others. Um, I'm sure you've seen the same thing watching storyboard. You know, some will have a, a fantastic ability to to show motion and, and everything, but maybe, you know, on model, they're like, eh. But you're talking about an animated show too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, features can... I, I've seen feature boards a broad range and uh, as far as... Do they look like characters or not, or look like anything? So. <laughs> Which for me, uh, it helps because I have to take whatever those designs are and and turn it into finished art. Mm -hmm. And so I have to trust that the storyboard artist is working uh, from you know the right reference or has gotten it. You know, as the better they get it, the the more it helps me. But that's my problem now. Yeah. I do want to roll this clip because uh, you, you you reminded me. I had thought you had done this. It is one of the uh, the, the more memorable moments in all of Simpsons history. Uh, set up this clip for us with poor Ned Flanders and his kids. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my when I did character layout. This is probably the second episode I worked on. Uh, the Trash of the Titans with Steve Martin. And uh, I, I think it's been a while, but I think what happens is Homer becomes the trash manager for the city and basically just buries trash under the city of Springfield. And eventually it starts pouring, coming up through the ground in various spots. All right, here we go. Is, There's no sound in this one, but we don't need it. No, it's quick. Go, oh, Mr. Bunny. Uh, you scarred a lot of kids for life with that uh, with that clip. The extra cool thing about that particular scene is that was the season premiere uh, episode, and we were having a premiere party, and Phil Hartman uh, was nearby me when we were watching this, and he belted out laughing at that scene. Ah, uh, that is fantastic. That's great. That's well, my celebrity story. 
There you go. There you go. Okay. So uh, we'll come back to Simpsons here if we need to, but uh, a little bit of Disney time with uh, well, planes. We'll, we'll maybe move, move on from planes. <laughs> <laughs> Zootopia. Yep. Got to shine for a little bit. That's uh that's not too shabby. And, uh, and then of course uh, there's, Oh, Disney animation. And uh, frozen fever. And look at there's there's yep. a little bit. Of, oh, you and Olaf. Mm -hmm. Look at you. Draw princesses. That's a big crowd of nerds there. Yeah. And, and then and then more importantly, uh, D Disney Animation had a ukulele group. Yeah, that was that was a weekly meeting thing we would do. Uh, and this picture was taken right before we, they were doing sort of a, um, they were showing the whole studio or having a meeting with the whole studio in the theater. And they wanted to have us open up the meeting with a song. So that's why we were all dressed up. That's so those. sweet. That's so sweet. Hey, let's, uh, let's take a quick, you, you, I, I've got one of your Zootopia clips. Okay. Let's let's take it now. Uh, the Zootopia stuff did it make it into the movie? This stuff did not. They ended up uh, rewriting almost ninety percent of that film <laughs> in the last year of production. So a lot of the stuff that I did, as cool it was as it was, just just didn't fit. Which is, you know, so much of the film was thrown out in that last year. So. It wasn't a reflection on me. It was no. nature of the biz. And honestly, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we do, uh, it's kind of the only thing I could kind of compare it to with what I do is the product design work, which is the the job is is the fun in itself. Whether or not the product gets made, A, I have no control over, and it's it's not my job to finish it. I mean, I'm, I'm part of the process after I'm done, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Paid, I got paid. <laughs> you throw a bunch of spaghetti at uh, spaghetti at the wall, you see what sticks. Well, let's take a look at this. Uh, it's just neat. And I think uh, one of the reasons why any storyboard artist uh, that I get to talk to or you see the work from is this. You just don't see this stuff. Um, so it's just neat to see. So let's take a look at this bad boy. That snow. A little more finished here. A little more soundtrack stuff. Yeah, they. Hey, they had a good else. editing department that would. Uh, Sergeant a, knew it really knew how to uh, add. I don't think we're gonna find a trail in all this snow. To the scene. Of course we will. All we've got to do all is got to do is follow our follow noses. noses. Sound familiar? Sniffers, but Swinton said no. You see a pig in a pantsuit in the pantsuit. Great sound effect here. I want that fox, dead or alive. I've never seen the movie. Okay, so question. Yeah. How tricky is it? Uh, or what What or when in the process do you ever hear the sound uh, of the cast 
that's that's after you've done your part. Mm -hmm. They go in and they throw that in, and then you just get a hold of the file later. Uh, the I don't know if you did picked up on it, but that the voice of Bogo is me. I, I yeah, that was they. When you go to pitch your board. You basically take on you do the voices as best as you can. Um, there's no other sound effects, so you're just you know you're you're literally at a computer hitting the the forward key, going to the next panel, and you do the voices and whatever sound effects. Editing will then you know uh, pretty it all up, and they like the way I did Bogo, so they would have me come down and record his lines, and it was fun. I got to be deep and mean and menaceful. Menaceful. <laughs> menacing <laughs> Ooh. I like it a lot of yelling he yelled, he yelled at he yelled at hops a lot so it was a lot of yelling for the rest of the show we're going to talk like yeah. Joe yes <laughs> up so, close to the microphone uh, you have then when you're doing a scene is there any sort of time restraints given to you as you're laying it out or do you get to kind of feel out your own sense of pace and rhythm and timing yeah you're really with feature you're really just make it fun you know do what you the, here's point a here's point b get them you know get it to this point do what you want in between we'll see what works um and it was weird going from Simpsons where everything is scripted and, you know, you didn't divert from the script to basically going without a net. Well, that was my next question. Was what format are you given your, 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 your marching orders? And uh, is it, I guess you said with the Simpsons, you get a fairly fleshed out script. Yeah. I mean, they'll, they have directing notes, everything, where locations and all that stuff. With the uh, uh, with feature, you, you I mean they kind of had an outline, and and a lot of times the outline and script would just kind of absorb whatever you come up with. I mean, you were assigned, you're basically plussing up whatever uh, you know, whatever setup you were given. You. And you could take that as far as you want, or you know, you can always, you know, the more the better. They can always take stuff away if you don't, you know, give them enough material. It doesn't look good. <laughs> and when you've got a movie that's CGI animation, uh, and you're doing your drawn uh, storyboards, is it viewed as much more of it of an exploratory part of the process than say something like the simpsons where they would hope that maybe the animators can take what you've done and, and apply it to to the next stage or is it is it the same i guess with the movie there's more time and money to to explore options yeah i mean the, like in this in the case of that particular scene Bogo, I think at the time I started that guy, I don't know if there was even a, a design for him. So I, they, I, there was a, a buff or Cape Buffalo, whatever he is, model, and and but nothing of official. So I was trying to figure out how to draw him quickly and simply, and the world itself was not even fully figured out. They had an idea that they wanted a world, a part of the town that was all covered in snow, a part that was all in forest, a part that was in the desert, and you know, none of the logistics of how that happened occurred was really figured out. So turning off the snow is like, it, it seems logical that they could control that. So um, there were no drawings or anything for me to refer to. I just, I figured it'd be big turbine looking thing. So that's what I came up with. Cool. And uh, working with Disney was a good, a reasonably a good experience. It was a great experience. Um, definitely at the right time. Uh, we <laughs> got in. I didn't work on Frozen, but I got in right as soon as Frozen was released. So, you know, got to kind of relish in the uh, glow of profitability. <laughs> and, and I want to say, uh, because we saw pictures of you in Burbank 
with uh, Disney? Was that was that where they are? are they yeah. Uh, now, even though you you started uh, with Film Roman in LA and in that area, you've since been able to get to that snazzy point where you get to be not in California. Yeah, I kind of been doing this before it became sort of the norm. Uh, I I'd gone gone rogue in 2015. Uh, although I was working with Ben 10 at the time, I, you know, was doing it from here and we did our meetings via, yeah. Uh, yeah, did our meetings via Google meetup or whatever. And, uh, it worked great. I, I, I had actually never stepped foot into the studio until I was actually done working on the show. I finally went out there and met the directors in person. Um, at, uh, and then Simpsons, when I started back with them, initially they wanted me to come out once a month, but within a month COVID hit. So everything went <laughs> online and it's, I think they, I think they're going to, I think they'll kind of keep it this way. It's, um, it's kind of beneficial, you know, for everybody. I'm used to it. They don't let me leave this basement. So that's why I do this show. It's a subtle plea for help. You can tell I blink uh, uh, in Morse code. Uh, <laughs> so does my skeleton here. As he watch. Yep. Yep. All right. Oh. Let's. I, oh. You sent me a Ben 10 clip because, and, and you're right. It's a good one. So let's roll, <laughs> let's roll the Ben 10 clip here. Very if you go to college to learn how to do this, I cannot draw a straight line. Wow, it looks just like you. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. That's about right. And we'll we'll uh, we'll get as we look at more of your art here. Uh, we'll explain why for you that's even more of a a home hitting home. Uh, job but here's some of your own illustration work uh from over the years which is gorgeous mm, thank you and uh a little bit more uh, of your uh illustration work and then uh here's here's some of your recent caricature portrait work now you had you had a long long time of doing caricature art didn't you yeah that you were you were around for some of that that was Oof. I made uh, a supplement in my little little income I made uh, during the college years. Started out in a theme park and then freelanced it for a long all through college. And, uh, and these are these are newer digital pieces that you do for for fun, or what are these for? Yeah, I, I'm actually kind of drawing a blank as to why I did these. Um, I don't think these were people that I that asked me to do I think I just found some photos online and and um, and uh, but those are done on procreate on an iPad uh, um, which by the way because a lot of times these show up on on Instagram so uh, yeah if you want to see more of Ben's work uh, benlane.com and then uh, weasel Lane on Instagram there you are there you go now. One of the things, there's a couple of things non-animation related that will just will just indulge us a little bit. And the first is uh, kind of goes in with your buddy that's behind us, behind you. You are a madman when it comes to Halloween. Mm -hmm. You're insane. Yeah. It's too yeah. much. It should be stopped. And I'm jealous because you don't live near me. But here's you a little be jealous. Oh. Are you already starting uh, this 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 season's uh, Halloween stuff? <laughs> Whatever would make you say that. I, uh, you know, I, I, you should buy a I, I, uh, I gotta, I kind of have to start repurposing at this point because I've run out of room to put stuff. <laughs> so wow. I kind of, I, I, I would like to start a whole new thing, but. I have no, I, I can't, I can't justify paying for more storage space. <laughs> I like the pears, Ben. Oh, there's, there's my boy. Their favorite. <laughs> yeah, this thing was quite the hit. It's, it's a little buggy in the daylight just because the infrared doesn't always detect, but at night it worked charm. 
Dear Lord. Ah, oh, you're lucky you're still married. The funnest part of that whole process is making the sound effects, to be honest. I, I, it's just, I, 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 that's always just been my favorite stage. That's awesome. Okay. And forget the rest of this because everything we've talked about up to now is, is totally unimportant. The lounge act. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, do yeah. I, oh. The oh, do I miss the lounge act? The ruffles are a little snugger now, but oh, I miss it. I don't know what I did with that jacket. I, I must have finally gave it up. Man, I got. I still. I still got my. I don't have the hair, and uh, I think I've gained. You know, probably an extra twenty five pounds if we're being nice. But, uh, but that uh, if people don't know that, and and the nice thing about uh, time passing is that. Thanks, Ben. Is that we can kind of revise history a little bit, and so this uh, this was Vic Tempo and Benny Lane, and we yeah. were we were huge in the Central Ohio Lounge uh, circuit. Huge. I don't quite remember that part. Well, no, no, no. That that's that's just what we did to say. <laughs> Must not have been a very big circuit. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> oh man! That that that, let, that that one key that's taped down so because <laughs> it broke off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think somewhere they really didn't have a budget for good equipment. Oh man, somewhere there might be footage, but I think it's thank God it's lost to time. Mm. Mm. Yep, mm. that was that was bet you all. All we had was the Casio. And the uh, the pre uh, oh it was bad. I believe our 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 uh, pre prerequisite for picking a song was if we had the beat already pro pre programmed on the Casio. I mean, That's what, that was why uh, "Kiss Like a Virgin" <laughs> was uh, was the biggest. Uh, that was the best because you're like it's the same beat, it's the same. It, it was just a bum 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 bum. Mm -hmm. And it How just songs can we get out of this? Yeah. And that's the one where literally all you did was just kind of for the most part, yeah, you, you mm -hmm. just hit the, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. uh, good times, yeah. I miss it. No one else does. No, no. I I wonder if the the if anyone from Sue Wall's uh, was it a Christmas party? Well, well, I if anyone uh, speaks of that night. It's it's. <laughs> It's sad that you mentioned that because uh, that that was actually for uh, the couple who became uh, future uh, sister and, and brother-in-laws. So, so, so it has been discussed. <laughs> oh, I, oh, we try not to mention it ever. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no. For the most part, uh, for the most part, I just sit in the corner and try. They have nobody talk to me about uh, family <laughs> gatherings, but uh, but yeah, I don't think Gina was there. My wife was there for that. Unfortunately, she missed out. But she has since at least gotten a, a taste of uh, of what the uh, what the act was. And wow, and uh, yeah, I believe we used an, a, a table stand for the keyboard stand. I mean, we didn't even really have a legit piano. <laughs> she got to hear a piano. She got to hear you play piano at least. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So she got to hear that. But uh well, okay, so um we were talking a little bit about this before the show about hopefully getting you to to out of the house now and maybe at some conventions, which if we do, then look out. We uh Yeah. Yeah. Now for 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 YouTube reasons, we can't continue with that song uh, oh, because I'm not paying. <laughs> I'm not paying any sort of uh, royalties to uh, to what that was. But uh, but we'll see what we can do here over the years. Uh, I think all of Central Ohio is clamoring for the return of Vic Tempo and, and Benny Lane. The rigor mortis experience. Was it the rigor mortis brothers? Oh man. That's painful. Yeah. We should have done t-shirts. 
Well, hey, now we can. Now yeah, we can. I just want to, I want to remind you now, Joe, uh, before we ask you if you have any questions, I got to point out, Joe, Joe, uh, Ben also showed up in a zombies game. All I think right. Be possibly giving him the finger. He's part of the brotherhood. And then, of course, there's there's Joe uh, on the cover of the Twilight Creations board game Zombies. Third edition. Third edition. Get it on Amazon and at any quality game store. You know, what I loved about that photo reference I sent you, I actually had like pink eye at the time. So I really just, it looked like a zombie. Was not, uh, was not too, too hard for me to draw Tom. We love you. Tom's watching. Uh, yes, we will. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll have enough drinks. Brought to you by Reinhouse. Reinhouse.com. Reingeist. Reingeist. Is that, oh shoot, man. I got the wrong. <laughs> oh, this, week, this week, let's open up a RG Bev's Wowie Colada. Mm. Hey, if you like pina colada, you're getting caught in the rain. Oh, man. Ooh. Whoa. That hit me in the face. <laughs> Joe, you got any questions for Ben now that you've had an introduction to the legend that has been... Uh -oh. What, what's Matt Groening really like? I have met him probably shortly after I started there. So 20 some odd years ago, 24, 25. Um, nerdy, quiet. He shows up to the parties and tends to hole up somewhere off to the side where people don't see him and leaves early. Right. You ever get to meet uh, my buddy Bill Morrison? Uh, you know, I think I saw uh, he wasn't he a special guest at some I think it was an ISC uh, caricature convention or something. And I met him there. And I think that's the only time I've ever met him. Yeah, he lives uh, outside of Detroit now and does a lot of shows. So we've gotten a gotten the chance to. Uh, so he works on the TV show or do, do the print stuff? Bill Bill was like the art director for Bongo and and headed up I think all of the print uh, side. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. So all the DVD covers. Anytime that they showed up, anytime there was something in print that had Matt Groening's signature, that was I think that was Bill. And, okay. Uh, and then he went on to do a lot of Futurama work, and, uh, and then eventually uh, he was the uh, editor art director of Mad Magazine when it was out in L.A. And then when they shut that down, I think he he packed up and moved home to uh, to the Detroit area to, you know, set up shop there. So nice guy. Yeah, we yeah we don't yeah we don't really cross paths much with the print people. There are some animators that did jump ship and go to the print side. Um, well, people always yeah. ask me, and yeah, I I never have anything to do with the animation side of any uh, Nickelodeon or any uh, Netflix, any of the companies I work for. Um, yeah. It's always either the Random House or it's the New York edition of Nickelodeon, which is in the the Viacom building with uh, with the cable networks. So, yeah, my my version of that story is I get asked, you know, oh, you worked on The Simpsons? Did you work on the movie? Well, we were, we were, if people miss that, so if people don't know what I do, I draw children's books for TV shows and at conventions, uh, my popularity goes like this. Oh, SpongeBob. Oh, you work on the show? No. Oh, do you work on the comic? No. Oh. <laughs> and then. Whop, yeah. whop, whop, whop. <laughs> No, I work on on publishing and print and books and video game covers, DVD, you know that kind of. Oh, it's changing now because the Dora generation is getting older. So, uh, you know, I'll meet I'll meet twenty somethings who who have grown up with the books and 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 get it a little bit more, which is nice. So, hey, uh, we try to keep this under an hour. We've got some movie talk. Can you want to stay with us for some movie reviews? Definitely. Okay, well, we're going to bring in our buddy Adam here. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm good. Are, are you ready? Because this is going to be real exciting. Uh-huh. Are you ready for Adam watch the movie? Yeah. 
because we got a lot to talk about. Uh, so, Adam, what movie did you? I don't want to say choose to watch this week, but what movie did you watch this week? Uh, the the wall. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Adam, the uh, 19, oh, I did not see that coming. 19, 1982 classic. Did you? Was this your decision, or, or no? Was, was it maybe somebody else's decision? Your decision. All right, Adam. Uh, uh, it's your. What's your review of the wall? Um, comedic spec spectacular. Yeah. Did you understand any of it? Uh, no. Okay. Did, <laughs> There's did, a wall. Did, did it make you uh, want to shave your eyebrows off? No. <laughs> Makes you want to join a rock and roll band? Yeah. Nothing? Did you want to become a, oh. a fascist? <laughs> no. Is, Have a thing for hammers? Worm? <laughs> Do you like hammers more? <laughs> Yes. Are you glad your dad didn't die in World War II? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we learned some things. Uh, so did you give it, would you give it a thumb up, thumbs up or a thumbs down? I mean, the, the, the beginning of it and the ending of it were great. The middle was boring, but, but to the, the beginning and the middle were great. Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. All right. So as a pal, one of these where it goes like this and then back up. Is it? Yeah. Gotcha. As a as a palate cleanser, though, uh, after the wall, we didn't just stop at the wall, did we? No. No. We uh, we continued with the. Uh... Oh, before we continue, hey Joe, we do this. Ben, we do this after every film review that Adams uh, uh, done. We we play the game. Has Joe seen it? Now I'm gonna say that uh for the first time joe has seen it what do you say what do you think adam i think he's seen it ben do you think joe has seen the wall i don't think he's seen the whole thing okay joe have you seen the 1982 pink floyd classic the wall starring boomtown rats own bob geldoff start to finish i have not seen one minute of the wall <laughs> <laughs> so the streak I was hoping, I was just rooting, I was rooting that maybe this week you had seen a movie, but Adam still wins. Yeah. Well, we'll we're giving you at least one more try, because afterwards we watched the 1968 classic, The Green Slime, which is what you watch uh, after you watch The Wall. Uh, and now this is a... Uh, this was a Japanese movie from uh, the Toei uh, studio, which brought us Spider-Man. And uh, basically, this movie is alien. Uh, but instead of the Giger designs, <laughs> it's this adorable little dude and clones of him. Oh, gosh, he's so adorable. Slightly lacking, but sure. Adorable. And again, it's alien. Uh, now the thing that's that's bizarre about this this movie is that it's a Japanese production with an with an entire non-Japanese cast. So and a telephone. <laughs> yeah, and it just feels like it just feels weird, and it feels like uh, uh, Kamen Rider or Spider Man should show up any minute now to fight uh, to fight the Green Slime. Now we kind of we kind of fast forwarded through this bad boy, but Adam. What do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down for the green slime? Thumbs up. Thumbs up for an edited, fast-forwarded, 30-minute version. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, thanks, Adam. Yep. Ah. Once again, we appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Do you, <laughs> do you even need to ask on that one? I don't know. No, no. Don't even need to ask. Yeah. Okay. But I do have, Ben, since you're here... I got one more movie review because I watched too many movies this week. Uh, so, so I'm going to take over here because this one, th this is, I didn't realize I'd actually seen this one before uh, until I started watching it. And I'm talking about the frozen dead, <laughs> which is a, a 1966 British sci-fi classic, not classic. Okay. 
I, you know, I mean, really, I like to call it Los Muertos Cangelado. Cangelado. <laughs> but uh, the Frozen Dead, okay, the Frozen Dead is about uh, Nazis that were frozen, and 20 years later, they're, the Nazi party is trying to bring them back for a second chance. <laughs> and, and the scientist, the Nazi scientist, is in charge of thawing them out and bringing them back to life. And he's having a hard time uh, with the brain, as you do. And so uh, while he's trying to figure out how to find like a fresh brain, he conveniently gets a visit from his non-Nazi niece, Elsa, and, and her BFF, Jean. And, you know, you know what that means. Well, first off, you've got the severed arm wall. I forgot to mention the severed arm wall is is a, is a quiet piece. But but anyway, back to Gene. You know, Gene's going to end up a, a, a reanimated severed head on a table. I love reanimated severed heads on table movies. They are they are always awesome. And uh, this movie, so you have you have the uh, what the the. The brain that wouldn't die. You have Reanimator. You also have uh, Frozen Dead. But the way that this movie tries to top the brain that wouldn't die or Reanimator, not only is she a reanimated uh, severed head on a table, there's no body under there. No, no, no. It's her. She's also a psychic reanimated severed head on a table. So spoiler alert, poor head of, of Jean is able to uh, control the uh, the arm wall and the uh, and the frozen Nazis and uh, I guess help save the day and uh, the movie ends I'll just give it away for you the movie ends with a close up of poor Jean uh, repeatedly saying bury me and then we cut to credits so there you go now that is uh, different from the uh, novels ending I believe. <laughs> And yet, I tell you, the movie, graphic novel. The movie you think I make it sound like this movie is a home run. The movie's an hour and a half long, and it is easily forty-five minutes too long. <laughs> oh my god, it drags. It's so slow. But uh, but points for unfreezing. Try points for frozen Nazi zombies. Still and, in their uh, uniform, even <laughs> <laughs> hanging on the forks, and and of yeah. course. Hats off to poor Jean and her uh, psychic severed reanimated head. There you go. Groundbreaking. Yep. Yep. Well, I guess, uh, Ben, it's been an hour. Let's see if we got anything else here. Uh, oh, hey, let's finish it. We, we do have, uh, we didn't show the arcade animation. Let's let's wrap it up. This is uh, one of your little uh, uh, passion projects you did for uh, your at-home arcade. Let's show a little bit of a full Ben Lane piece of animation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was, what was that done in? Uh, good old flash animation. It'll never die. <laughs> kind of see it, it goes in this. This is a little arcade room machine back here. You can't really make it out, but it's a it's an old radio that I converted to an arcade. So that's the startup screen for it. I love it. I love it. Well, hey man, thanks so much for uh, for hanging with us. We're gonna we're gonna uh, close out the show here, and then uh, yeah, maybe maybe are you gonna stick around and chat for a little bit? Off air? Sure. Oh boy. Sure. All right, we can buddy. Finally swear. Well, okay. Thanks again for being on the show. And Thanks, once man. again, you uh, if you've got uh let's see here, where are we going with our banners here? If you if you want to see more of Ben, we got benlane.com and uh Weasel Lane on Instagram. And currently you're still working on The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Season 34. Oh jeez. <laughs> That's a lot. All I right. I have, have 
grown up and become doctors in the duration of this show. <laughs> they they have, but they still haven't paid off their student loans. No. All right, buddy. Good to see you. And thanks again, man. Okay, thank you. Well, there you go, Joe. Another episode in the books. Yeah. I tell you, that's impressive. I think it is. It's something. Well, when 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 you work on the TV show, it's so much more impressive than when you just work in print. Right. So when uh, kids come up to ask you if you worked on the graphic novel version of Dave and Joe are bored, or were you part of the show? This time you can say, oh, I was on the show. Finally. Finally. I can say, but did you work on the show? Oh, Dave and Joe are bored? Yeah, yeah, I worked on that. Yeah. Do, do, do you, well, then they say, oh, do you do the comp? No, I didn't do the comp. Oh, I just did the children's book version of of Dave and Joe are bored, which uh, will be coming out uh, later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got we got we got a recommendation from our buddy Vince here. The thing with two heads and Jekyll and Hyde. The thing with two heads is definitely a uh, a classic. I think I actually have it. Uh, yeah, it's right here. It's uh, it's Rosie Greer and wow. uh, Ray Milland. That's oh, wow. a classic. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna be a, a severed head attached to a body. See, that's different because that's not a severed head on a table. That's a severed head attached to a body, and that's the uh, the severed head of a uh, a racist white guy attached to uh, Rosie Greer. I love that you literally had that within arm's reach. Thanks, Vince. Got to show off that. Uh, that's right there. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say it's still wrapped. <laughs> 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 well, okay. Uh, well, mm. it's time to go. We got the uh, we got the message from Bluto that it's time to go, and uh, let's just wrap it off with a little bit of a plug for uh, Twilight Creations here. If you haven't gotten uh, the board game Zombies, it's available on Amazon.com. It's a fun little board game with map tiles and zombie figures, and uh, you roll dice and you kill zombies. It's been around. We've been working on this for like twenty years. Zombies by Twilight Creation. All righty. Joe, I guess that's it. All right, man. Good show. Thank you so much, man. We'll uh, hopefully be back next uh, next week. Looking forward to it. Maybe. I got a different, in honor of Ben, we got a different, we got a different closeout. It's not going to be on Pond Mon. Oh, wow. So there you go. Good night, everyone. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. This is Dave, and I'm Dave Akins. I'm Joe Holland. See you later. This is Dave and Joe are bored. Uh, join us on YouTube. This will be up on YouTube, our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to that, I guess the kids say. Good night.